your yo-yos, get out your yayas, because it's time for the Dr. Bad Show. Get ready to meet your host, a man who's a close personal friend of Bullwinkle. Here he is, it's Dr. Dr. Bad. Dr. Fang. Dr. Fang. Take a walk on the wacky side. Dr. Fang. Find some fun that is Who's got something here? Okay. Oh, my invention is called the automatic ammunition. Mm -hmm. And it's for when you're playing out in the snow, and instead of packing snow together to make a snowball, which also it falls apart, you just scoop it up like this. And depending on if you're a lefty or a righty, it has extra room on your glove to throw the snowball. I see. So perfect six snow snowballs every time. And a lot harder, too, right? <laughs> What's your name? John Carmen. Let's hear it for John and his snowball. <laughs> Got something here, okay. My invention is the link blanks. They're lighted decorations for your roller skates. I see. You have eyes. They're very colorful, and these lights are blinking here. Yeah. And what made you come up with this? I wanted something to dress up my skates while I'm roller skating. I see. They really look neat. What is your name? Stephanie Ball. Let's hear it for Stephanie and her <laughs> link blanks here. That's great. Well, we have a very large invention here. <laughs> this is a safety cap. You place these over the faucets of a bathtub. By mm -hmm. using this, oh. a small child cannot accidentally turn on the hot water and burn himself or leave the water on and drown. I see. That's really neat. No more scalding, huh? Yep. What made you come up with this invention? Well, my, my cousin is really little, and I don't want him to get hurt by the burnt water, or I don't want him to drown. I see. That's great. What's your name? Lori. Lori and? Stacy. Lori and Stacy. Let's hear it for that great bathtub invention. That's really great. The Dr. Fred Show is all about creating and inventing. We've interviewed thousands of kids, checked out their ideas, and chosen the best inventors to join us on our show. They'll demonstrate their brilliant creations with their audience as the judge, and we'll challenge their inventing skills right in the spot in our fad lab. And David, let's not forget our grand prize. Strap yourselves in, because today's grand prize winners get a trip on Earth Shuttle to Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. <laughs> Welcome to our show, Inventors. Ready for our first Fad Lab Challenge? Yeah. Yes, it's round one of the Fad Lab Challenge. Remember, the winner gets 30 points, the first runner-up 20 points, and the second runner-up 10 points. In the case of a tie, the contestants will split a maximum of 60 points between them. All right, what fiendish concoction do we have cooked up for our first Fad Lab Challenge? It's time for another patented Dr. Fad Targorama Challenge. Ah, yes, the old Targorama Challenge. Now, contestants, in your Fad Lab, you will find a a steel ball perpetual motion machine. Use that to propel a ball down a flume towards the target. That doesn't sound too tough to me, Dr. Fan. Ah, but that's not all, David. It's no, it's no ordinary target because it's the colorized Dr. Fad targa, Targarama target. You see, each section on the target has different colors and they're worth different points. You can all have three shots each. The contestant with the highest point is the winner. You're an absolute fiend, Dr. Fad. This is a tough one. That's where you're going to have some practice time. Got it, Fadsters? Run to the Fad Lab. Start practice. It's time to present the award that means so much to so many people. The intriguing, the provocative, the profound, the one and only award truly worth its weight in wacky wall walkers, the Golden Gizmo Award. The Golden Gizmo Award was created by the Dr. Fad Show to bring recognition to the great fads of all time. The year was 1980, and you were there. Okay, you're not, but let's pretend. The place is communist Hungary behind the Iron Curtain. Well, not a real Iron Curtain, but it feels like it. And you're standing in the office of Professor Erno Rubik. In Dr. Rubik's hand is a geometric cube with multicolored sides that can be twisted in every direction. 
43 quintillion combinations to be precise. That's 43 and 14 zeros. Slowly, his geometric cube made its way to the continental United States and a fad was born, the Rubik's Cube. The cube was everywhere. Kids stashed them in their lunch boxes, dads slipped them in their briefcases, and moms twisted and turned them for hours on end. Everybody was twisting so much that Chubby Checker was jealous. And here to accept the golden gizmo for the Rubik's Cube is the world champion cube solver, Jeff Vassano! Nice show, Jeff. How you doing, Jeff? Hi, <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Jeff, uh, how did you first become interested in the cube? Uh, well, it all started as my, my freshman year in high school. I picked up the cube and I solved it. And then about a year later, the, the puzzle became really popular. Uh, and uh, at the request of a couple of friends, I, I wrote up a solution to it. Uh -huh. uh, and next thing I know, the solution was Xerox. It was all over school. And people I didn't even know were coming up to me asking me uh, tips uh, on, on my solution. I see. What is your best time for solving the cube? Uh, I think my personal best time is, is 11 seconds when my friend Adam was, ta wow. was timing me in my house. I see. Well, uh, how long did it take for you to become an expert at this? Well, it took me about two weeks to solve it the first time, but it took me uh, really about a month or a month and a half to really master it, to be able to do it any time I wanted to be able to do it. Uh, is there a particular secret to solving the cube? Well, my secret is my five-part uh, method, which I'll, I'll show you. Um, the first step is to get all of the corners on one side. For example, I have all of the orange corners um, facing on one side. And then I rotate the cube around, and I look at the, uh, the red corners here. And I know these also have to match. So I, I I, there are a few patterns that I recognize. And I perform a move, and now I have all of the red ones facing up while still maintaining the orange ones on the other side. And then I perform a small manipulation. And next thing you know, I have all of the corners on every side. Uh, step, th step three is uh, to solve two, op two opposing sides. OK, so now I have most of the yellow solved. Then I turn it around, and I'm solving most of the green. And now I have both opposite sides. I have all of the green and all of the yellow. And that just leaves a few small pieces on the middle slice, um, which I just put into place. And that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> OK, Jeff, now we're going to give you the time challenge. Here it is. This okay. cube is completely scrambled, sort of like my brains at this point after watching you. <laughs> and here's the time stop, the watch. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. Five seconds. Ten seconds. Fifteen seconds. 20 seconds. Seven. Wow! Oh, 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 oh. 25, 25 seconds, ladies seconds. and gentlemen. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, Thank you. Great. Wow. Thanks, Thanks, well, okay. well, on behalf of the Dr. Fred Show, it's our great pleasure to present you with the Golden Gizmo the Award. Golden Gizmo! Contestant number one, you got your ball in place. Okay, ninth, now time for the real challenge. You're going to have three shots. So, 30 oh, points. Oh, yes. Right. 30 points. That's your second shot. Whoa. Oh, hey. points. Total of 60 points. Whoa. The highest total, you can get 90 points for Jordan. Oh, that's really something. OK, here we have Elaine. Ready? 30 points. <laughs> 30 points again. All right, 60 points. Whoa. 90 points. We have a tie right now. Boy, this is getting, we have all great shooters here. OK. Oh, just missed a 30 here, Carl. 10 points. Oh, 10 points. Just, just barely missing the 30 here. 30 points. A total of 50 
50 points for Kyle. Well, we have a tie here between Elaine and Jordan with 90 points. They're the winners of this Fad Lab Challenge. David, let's take a look at the Fad scoreboard. At the end of round one, our scores are Carl with 10 points and Elaine and Jordan tied with 25 points. Okay, Fast Church, you did great in your Targorama challenge. Now let's see how well you can do in your brainstorm round where you're gonna present your fantastic inventions to the audience and they're gonna vote on which of your fabulous creations they like best. First, we have Elaine and her telephone alarm now. Can you tell us how this works? Well, this invention is for people who have a big phone bill or are on the phone too long. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can set the timer for how long you're going to be on the phone. When your time runs out, a tape will play, and my dad will yell at you to get off the phone. <laughs> Do you have this problem a lot? Yeah. I see. Can, can we try this? Sure. So you're, you're just yakking away on the phone. Oh. Time's up. Hang up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's your real dad. I think that's fantastic. This will say, cut, cut a lot of uh, dollars off your phone bill, huh? <laughs> that's great. Let's hear it for Elaine and her telephone alarm. <laughs> that's great. Next, we have Jordan and his double umbrella. Hi, uh, this, is, mm -hmm. this is the double umbrella. This allows the child to stay dry while walking with their parent in the rain. Yeah. And it has a built-in light. And look, here's the light right up here. Right up there. For I the see. dark. For the dark. How, what made you come up with this, Jordan? My sister always got wet when we were walking in the rain under my mom's umbrella, uh -huh. so I invented the double umbrella. Uh-huh, I see. So that. you could do a duet with singing in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it's great. Let's hit for Jordan and his double umbrella. Okay. Next we have Carl and his ultraviolet mask for horses now. Yeah, you, you know, you're, you're an avid horse rider, right? Yeah. Okay, can you explain this to us? Let's pretend I'm the horse. Okay. David the horse here. Right. It has a clear vinyl shield that goes over his eyes so that the ultraviolet rays can't disturb how his eyes are and cause eye cancer. Um, the horses that have really pink eyes are the ones that get the eye cancer. I see. And it's, it's a very common sickness. Huh? They get eye cancer because the ultraviolet rays, yeah. and this protects their eyes. Yeah. I see. Great. Let's hear it for Carl and his ultraviolet mask for horses. Okay, kids in the audience and kids at home, it's time for you to be the judge. Which of these fabulous inventions do you like best? Carl and his ultraviolet mask for horses. Jordan and his double umbrella. Or Elaine and her telephone alarm. <laughs> well, I think we have a clear winner here. The winner of the brain was strong round is Elaine and her telephone alarm. <laughs> David, let's add up the two rounds and find out who our grand prize winner is. And our final scores are second runner up with 50 points, Carl. First runner up with 75 points, Jordan. And our grand prize winner with 95 points, the fabulous Elaine. <laughs> win today. Our runners-up will receive a brain booster set. Use the handheld decoder to unlock the secret answers to a galaxy of facts and intriguing activities from educational insights. And our grand prize winners will be going on a three-day learning adventure with Earth Shuttle. They'll visit Jiro at Epcot Center at the Walt Disney World Resort, SeaWorld, Kennedy Space Center, Spaceport USA, and U.S. Space Camp. Experience the excitement of a classroom unlike any you've ever seen with Earth Shuttle. <laughs> Court. The fad court is now in session. Each of our fad judges have selected items from the fad bag before the show. I'd like to know if you've reached a verdict on the items you chose. In particular, we'd like to know which of the items you judge to be the best. Judge Rosanna, what the heck have you got there? These are crazy straw glasses, and you put this in your mouth, and this is your drink, and you can watch what you're drinking while you drink what you're drinking, like this. Wow. Sounds wonderful to me. Okay. Judge Leah, what the heck have you got there? Well, these are pop-up watches, and of course they tell the time. And I like them a lot because I like the designs, and I think they're really cool. Let me see one of those pop up. Wow. That's impressive. All right. Judge David, what have you got there? Oh, well, this is the grunt, and he goes into little All fits right. whenever you clap or do something loud or whatever. Mm, I like it. Sort of a... Uh, Nice family resemblance there. Separated at birth, you be the judge. 
All right. Now, judges, which one of these things do you feel is so ludicrous, frivolous, preposterous, and altogether loony that it should be locked away forever? Well, we have decided that this was the looniest thing we could find. Um, it's called an elfin horn, and we see that it has no use and it makes the most unnecessary noise. Let's hear it. <laughs> Oh, I think that says it all. I hereby sentence this would-be fad to being strapped to an anthill and having jelly smeared in its ears. That should do the trick. Thank you, Your Honors. Fad court is now dismissed. <laughs> Dr. Fad. Dr. Fad. It's time for our next round of contestants. Let's find out who they are. Dr. Fad, come on up and meet Nancy Mersh. Hi, Nancy. Bjorn Cristiano. And Denny Mogan. Hi, Denny. Welcome to our show, inventors. It's time for our next Fad Lab Challenge. All right, what fiendish concoction do we have cooked up for this Fad Lab Challenge, Dr. Fad? It's time for the Towering Turntable Challenge. In the Fad Lab are a bunch of colored blocks and a rotating Targorama turntable. Okay, and your challenge is to build the highest tower that you can. You're a monster, Dr. Fad. This Fett. one's a pretty tough one, okay? Run to the Fad Lab! Start! Let's see some of the great inventions in our audience here. Okay, let's start with you. What do you have here? This is the time together swing. The mother sits here and the baby sits here so that um, that the mother can swing and the baby won't fall out. I see. That's really great. What's your name? Crystal. Let's hear it for Crystal and her invention. That's great. Okay. What do you have here? This is the nifty bat. And um, the, it, this is supposed to help you aim. And, Good aim. Uh -huh. And this is supposed, this is so you can just drink it when you're thirsty and you mm -hmm. don't have to go in. And this is so you don't have to hold your glove. What's your name? Alex. Let's hear it for Alex and his uh, super bat here. Okay. See this. What do you have here? This is a bunk bed book holder. I see. So that explain this to us. This, uh, these hooks, I guess, attached to your bunk bed? Yes. So you can read uh, before you sleep. That's great. What's yes. your name? Kevin. Let's hear it for Kevin and his bunk bed uh, bookshelf. That's really great here. Time's up in the fat lab. Let's see what our contestants are doing. Okay, we're going to start with Nancy here. This challenge requires a, uh, a good knowledge of centrifugal force. It's very difficult. Nancy has built a tower one, two, three, four, five, six blocks high. <laughs> Bjorn has built a tower one, two, three, four blocks high. And Denny has built a tower one block high. So that makes the winner of this Fab Lab Challenge, Nancy, which with six blocks. Nancy, how did you figure out to put it in the middle of the turntable? Well, it's a pretty simple fact, because all the other blocks I'm around there and I can not stand it. So I, I didn't want to move them to waste time, so I just started in the I middle. I see, and in the middle it doesn't rotate, right? Centrifugal force is very important here. David, what does that make the FAD scoreboard? At the end of round one, our scores are Denny with 10 points, Bjorn with 20 points, and Nancy with 30 points. <laughs> okay, inventors, your towers may have collapsed, but it's time for the brainstorm round where you can make up to 70 points by presenting your inventions to the audience, and they're going to vote on which of your great inventions they like best. First, we have Nancy and her fingernail washer. Can you explain to us how this works? Yes. The water in this bucket here will run down these mm -hmm. tubes. There's soapy water in here. Mm-hmm. Very soapy. And we come down here mm -hmm. on right there. You will put your fingernails mm -hmm. right soapy here. Soapy water running in here. Put your fingernail okay, put my fingernail like here. Yes. Put okay. your fingernails right there and you would make your oh, fingernails okay. get, get my nails clean. Let's run that some more. I see. <laughs> Great. Now, what, what made you come up with this? You want to turn that off? Okay. What made me um, come up with this is one that the day, the night that we um, wanted to make the adventure, uh -huh. my dad said, Nancy, your nails are very dirty. How about you wash them <laughs> off? And I said, Daddy, that's it. I can make a fingernail wash. And, 
and then he um, comes up with the idea in his head, and then um, we made the fingernail and here it washer. Is. That's great. Let's hear it for Nancy and her fingernail washer. Great invention here. Next, we have Bjorn and his instant trash remover now. Explain this to us. Uh, this is an instant trash remover, and I designed it for old and disabled people, uh -huh. and especially for kids who don't like to take out the garbage. Okay. <laughs> okay. All you have to do is open the window, go inside your house, open the window, take your trash here, uh -huh. and put a lot it. Of trash bags are really heavy, right? Put it in this container, uh -huh. and flip a switch on the wall, and the trash automatically goes over to this bin here. Oh, it, it even automatically dumps it. And dumps it. I see. Into the world's biggest trash bin here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I see. Oh, that's really great. Do you actually have a system like this at home? No. This is a model. This is a model, huh? It would be a great thing to have. Let's hear it for Bjorn and his instant <laughs> trash remover. Okay. Next, we have Danny and his slap shot hockey stick now. Uh, let, let's see how this works. Now, what's, what's the uh, problem with an ordinary hockey stick? Um, when, you, when you bring your stick up, you mm -hmm. might um, hit somebody in the face. I see. Right, when you take these aggressive shots, mm -hmm. you can hit somebody in the face. Okay. So what does this do differently? Um, when you pull up on the string, the head of the stick goes back. Whoa, I see. Oh, can you do that a couple of times here? Sure. And I see. So that gives the, the action. Do you have a puck here that you could show us what it looks like? Okay, let's say I'm the goalie, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That's very <laughs> good. Let's yeah. hear it for Denny and his slap shot hockey stick. That's great. Okay, kids in the audience and kids at home, it's time for you to be the judge. Which of these fabulous inventions do you like best? Denny and his slap shot hockey stick. <laughs> Bjorn and his instant trash remover. Or Nancy and her fingernail washer. <laughs> that makes the winner of the brainstorm round Denny and a slap shot hockey stick. <laughs> Congratulations, Denny. That's great. David, let's, let's add up the two rounds and find out who our grand prize winner is. And our final scores are Denny with 65 points, Bjorn with 70 points, and our grand prize winner with 75 points, the fabulous Nancy. Let's find out what our prizes today are. Well, our runners-up will receive a brain booster set. Use the handheld decoder to unlock the secret answers to a galaxy of facts and intriguing activities from educational insights. And our grand prize winners will be going on a three-day learning adventure with Earth Shuttle. We're almost out of time. If you'd like to become a contestant on the Dr. Fad Show or receive a free membership to the Dr. Fad Fan Club, send us a letter with your name, address, phone number, and if you want to become a contestant, a photo of your invention to the Dr. Fad Show, P.O. Box 11777, Washington, D.C., 2008. See you on the next Dr. Fad Show. And remember, kids, don't just follow fads, create them! All right.